Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again in today's video. An entitled city Karen moves into a property next to my farm. Her family has a ton of cars and she demands I let all of them park on my farm. When I refuse, she ends up suing me. Here is what happened. Let's dive right into the story. The first one starts like this. I own a very large plot of farmland in an area that had been rural for a very long time. For some reason lately a bunch of people have been moving into the area and trying to make it more suburban. It is not really working and what we have is a weird hybrid of people who think they are important and have money living in a rural area and trying to pretend like they aren't. I have no idea if I missed like a trend or some planet going crazy because this happened all within a couple of years out of the blue. Now most of these people don't need a story about them because they are just generically crappy people. Karen on the other hand crossed the line of being entitled so she gets her very own story to be online forever. Backing up a little bit Karen moved into a smaller plot of land with her huge family. Don't ask me how many people actually live on the property because it seems like people come and go all the time. I cannot keep track of how many people like legally live on that land but for sure Karen lives on the land with her husband and at least 8 kids. Kids being used as stretch because a couple of them are old enough to be married and have their own kids who also might live on the property. Again very hard to tell. Finally I find other people that I believe are aunts, uncles, cousins etc that always seem to be around as well. There's nothing wrong with a big family at all. In fact in rural areas like this having a lot of kids can mean more farmhands to help with chores. The issue was that they didn't have nearly enough space for the number of people trying to fit on this property. And because of this Karen told any of her family members that come to just park their car on my property so theirs would be less crowded and cluttered. I was not asked if this could happen and you can be sure that I was not happy about it either. Cars driving all over my land can ruin it for one and for another it's my private property. When it is one or two I might just get a little bit annoyed and want to go tell the people not to park there. When Karen throws a party though it can mean up to 12 cars randomly parked all over my property with their drivers too drunk to do anything. After one party I went to go and have a talk with Karen. Me, excuse me ma'am I was hoping I could have a word with you about the cars being parked on my grass. Karen, ew, you smell like manure and sweat. Don't you think a shower is called for before talking to somebody above you? Me, above me? That's a little presumptuous. Karen, wow, you even know a big word. I'm so impressed. Sarcastic, obviously. What is wrong with my car anyway? Me, you keep having people park on my property. I want it to stop or I'll have to start getting the police and towing company involved. Karen, that area is fine for them to park in. I'm the owner and say it's fine. Me, you only own to the fence. On the other side, the land is mine. Karen, don't pretend like you actually own land. You are probably just working for a dollar an hour and sending the money back to your family. Now might be a good time to point out that I'm Hispanic and now racism is checked off the Karen bingo card. I warn her again that I do own the land and this is her one and only warning to stay off of my land with the cars. You can imagine that since she does not even believe that I own the land she does not listen to a single word I say. A week later she has another party and I waste no time calling a towing company explaining that there are a dozen illegally parked cars on my property. I figured after one or two people getting towed people would start running out in a panic. However it was not until the ninth car being towed away that Karen got alerted to what was going on and started yelling and cursing at me. I told her that I warned her what would happen and she only had herself to blame. Her family could also only blame her because she let them park illegally knowing that they could get towed away. All 12 cars did get taken since nobody was sober enough to move them. Karen was pissed at me and the next day screamed that she was gonna sue me and take every last acre of my land. The war was now on and she did not know who she was getting into the ring with. Her lawsuit was horrible and revolved less around the actual facts and more about me not owning the land and being in the country illegally. Proving I was born here? Easy. Proving the land was mine? even easier. When it came to the actual point of the cars no lawyer was gonna help her take me to court because it was a losing battle. She could not sue me for no reason but I did not let things just nicely stop there. Karen had started a war and I was not gonna let her relax for one moment after what she pulled. 
I enjoyed my breakfast with a piping hot side of revenge and that was exactly what was coming for Karen. I had a feeling the parking issue was not gonna stop so I decided to set a trap on my property. Spikes that hid in the grass and at night would be impossible to see or notice until all your tires got blown out. Also perfectly legal since my land and my reasoning was if a car came fast into my land it could harm my animals. Four cars got popped tires and Karen called the cops on me for damaging her family's cars. I stood there and made the police ask them why they parked on a yard that had no trespassing and even danger do not enter signs. Karen again claimed it was her land and I was just a worker despite me having court records to show the police. I was asked if I wanted the cars removed from my property and I told the officers that I did. Karen was furious and I think family realized that she was not gonna beat me if she kept this going on. Cars stopped being parked on my land and I made sure to keep the spikes up just in case. I think at one point she tried to remove them or have one of her kids remove them. This is because I heard a yelp of pain over there and nothing else could have hurt them. I guess they thought I would be dumb enough to not place them properly or something. I do have to be careful over there now, but it was more than worth it to get my revenge on Karen. I may have also made an anonymous tip to the police about strange looking people coming and going all hours of the night. That got her entire property searched, which was also very entertaining for me. If she wants to start up the war again, I would be more than happy to keep getting revenge and having fun doing so. And yeah, ripe stars, if you still enjoy the stories, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even leave a comment because that would help me tremendously. Thank you so much and now let's continue with the next story. It is titled deportation revenge. Two disclaimers, number one, I was relatively young and naive and number two, I was in LURF. The protagonists are me, obviously, and CB, aka the a-hole, with guest appearances from NM1 and NM2, Niceman1 and 2. This all occurred pre-mobile phone and web and happened two weeks prior to traveling to the UK from Australia for the first time with my live-in British boyfriend of 18 months with a view to living there for the next year or two. I met CB when he came backpacking to Australia, after dating for a few months we moved in together. CB was on a 12-month working holiday visa in Australia but got a 12-month extension on a trip to NZ, allowing him to remain in Australia for up to two years, remember this important point. I had just put down the deposit on my flight, he already had a ticket and we had given notice at our apartment, quit our jobs, arranged with his parents to collect us at Heathrow etc. Then on Friday night CB simply does not come home from work. I assume Boozy sent off sleeping at a workmate's place home in the morning no problem. But then CB does not come home Saturday and I start to panic thinking he's dead or some similar horror scenario. I call his workmates but they know nothing. I finally find his boss on Sunday and I'm told that CB has been staying there and is in a real state and will call me later. What the hell? CB finally calls later that night still at his boss's house and tells me the following tale. On Friday he was interviewed by immigration who informed him that as he had breached the conditions of his visa by working in one job for more than three months, he needed to go back to the UK. He did not love me anymore and was instead going to Queensland for a two week holiday before going back to the UK alone. He would come home tomorrow to collect his bags. What the hell? I'm crying, I'm asking why, I'm begging for an explanation, I'm crying some more. By the way, if at this point you're thinking that I'm unbelievably stupid, I refer you to my earlier disclaimers. So after crying for a few hours, I ring my girlfriends for sympathy and support and more crying and then I crawled into bed. At work the next day, one of these girlfriends rings me and says that she is calling BS on CB's story and that I need to ring this number and speak to an M1 who is an actual immigration official. Nice man one tells me, incredibly kindly and patiently, that the story is indeed seven kinds of BS and that if someone had breached their visa and come to the attention of immigration, they would be scooped up immediately and not given a free pass for two weeks send off tour of sunny Queensland. He also informed me that while no one from the department had interviewed CB and there was no current file on him, upon checking his visa status CB was in fact in Australia illegally as he had not submitted a request for his visa extension when he travelled to New Zealand the year before. It turns out that being automatically eligible for a 12 month extension did not mean automatically receiving the extension. Oh my god, I may be naive but damn I can think quick when I'm angry. I told Niceman1 nice that if he wanted to apprehend CB he could come do so at our apartment that night. After CB came to collect his bags and give me some money he owed me. Suffice it to say it all went like clockwork. 
CB handed over cash, dragged his crap out of the house in a couple of garbage bags, somehow his suitcase would not be located, oops, and was grabbed by NM1 and NM2 and sundry police as he walked down our drive to the street. Three weeks or so later, NM2 rang to let me know that after spending three weeks in immigration detention, CB had been deported to the UK as an unlawful non-citizen. Score. CB also had to pay for the cost of his own removal, which strikes me just as the icing on the cake. My friend contacted the super fabulous travel agent and told her the story and I got my whole airfare deposit back. I found a new apartment and got another job and never had to speak to or look at him again. Angry is way better than sad, out of sight really is out of mind. And the next one is titled, Customize Always Right. One of the benefits of being a barber for many decades is listening to old guys talk about the good old days. You know, when DDT was freely dispersed, PTOs were ripping limbs from farm kits and various war stories. One of the drawbacks is listening to old guys talk. I'm usually open-minded to all walks of life and find differing opinions are interesting to hear. Unless I'm being fed regurgitated Alex Jones broadcasts being passed off as someone's original thought. I usually just keep repeating, is that right? Or if you say so, over and over until they leave. I learned a long time ago, some old guys are too set in their ways to bother having any real debate. I learned this from pissing off a lot of old guys. So Q, witchy old guy. BOG had an agenda. He went right past the usual football weather, how long you've been here, small talk, and it was politics. I got the feeling that I had offended one of his coffee club buddies in the past and his real purpose was to bet clean up. For that bet to clear the basis, something was off with his effect and the conversation became very forced pointed and not organic. While I'm clippering away he states a question. You would agree that… Sorry I cannot remember his exact question but I do know that I didn't agree and said so as politely as I could. I abhor people putting words in my mouth. When he again started, well, what do you agree with, total BS, the bile began building in the back of my mouth and again, sorry, I cannot remember what he said, but no, I did not agree at all and said so, not so nice this time tone. By now I see what is up, he is trying to get me to agree to a pretext of premises that will lead to the grand enlightenment that my simple mind will of course be forced to understand. He is channeling Alex Jones. When he gets to the third example, before he can expect agreement, I state, why would you think that? That doesn't make any sense. Strike number three, and BOG didn't like being derailed, he cannot have his aha moment if I don't agree with one, two or three. In the span of five minutes, BOG had gone from smirky know-it-all to nearly purple, really noticeable with white hair. He jumps out of the chair and spins to face me. I've seen that look before and know he's about to throw a punch at me, but he freezes and batters me with a death stare instead. I ask him if he's done, more death stares, again I ask if he's done, nothing but rage. I tell myself he is done, so I reach over his shoulder to undo the cutting cape. He has a phone out he's been recording the whole time, he does some fumbling with the phone, puts it to his ear and starts talking to 911. Oh my god, apparently this constitutes an emergency to BOJ. This was new territory, I've seen people use the police to fight their battles before, but this absolutely floored me. I was clueless as to what law I must have broken and I've taken law classes. I was willing to let BOG have his tantrum, leave with half a haircut and tell his coffee club buddies what an a-hole I am. It's true I am, but call the cops? I tell him loud enough for 911 and neighbors to hear to get out of my shop and I helped him out the door at the same time. He sat in his car with his wife still on the phone. A few minutes go by and they both get out and are standing in my parking lot. They were still on the phone and I'm getting madder by the minute at this entitled snowflake so I go out to yank his chain. Hopefully he will swing at me. I take out my fancy flip phone and take a close up photo of him and he tells this to the police. Additional charges? I go back inside and wait for the fuss. I don't get unis, I get two detectives at my door, this is serious business. After hearing BOG's complaint, they both come inside and ask me what happened. It took me 30 seconds to explain everything, then I was asked why I took his picture, I said he didn't pay for his haircut. He didn't pay for his haircut? Nope, not really a reason, but yeah, they both left without saying a word. A minute or so later, they return with BOG and make him pay $10 for the haircut. Apparently, the customer is always right is not a reason to bother the police after all and they were not happy with him. 
And the next one is titled Nurses Only. All right. Sitting in my wife's hospital room and a nurse asked if there was anything she could get me. I had a bit of a tickle in my throat and I was thirsty, so I asked for something carbonated. She brought me ginger ale. Great, problem solved. Next shift, nurse asked the same question and I asked for a ginger ale. She bought me a ginger ale with no problem. Next shift, no problem. Then things get interesting. Morning shift comes in. This nurse asks the same question. I asked for a ginger ale. She told me those are for patients only. I had to go get my own. So I instacarted a ginger ale along with a few other things with instructions to deliver to the room. They were taking my wife away to surgery and the instacart shows up at the same time. He asks if anyone ordered groceries. I waved my hand up and asked him to leave it in the room. The nurse exclaimed, you cannot do that. I told her, you told me I had to get my own. So I did. The sheer look of her head blowing a gasket was priceless. I really do love nurses. They are more important than the doctors in my opinion. Patients have the most contact with them. I even keep treats in the room just for nurses. I've never met a nurse as militant or controlling or as much of a sheer BTH as this one. So I took a bit of pleasure here. What she didn't know is that I was a patient in this hospital for 3.5 weeks back in January. I instacarted and door dashed orders with no problem. I could only eat so much hospital food. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. A couple of months before the main incident of this story, a Karen moved in next door to me. The man who owned the property next door to me rented it out instead of living in it. It did not really bother me as long as those people learned how things worked around here and did not cause any problems. Even though I owned my property, parking was not part of that and I had to pay separately to get a parking spot in front of my home. The good thing was that since it was mine and numbered, nobody else could park in the spot and at the end of the day I would not need to go looking. For me that is well worth the price because I hate looking for parking after a long day at work. Right away this Karen started loudly complaining to all of the neighbors that this area was not as nice as she thought it was going to be. She had no class and started going up and asking people how much they were paying in rent and how many square feet their property was. I was getting secondhand embarrassment from the stuff she was pulling. She also had a son that while I did not see him doing anything entitled, he was old enough to know that his mom was doing something wrong and seemed to just go along with anything she wanted. I once saw her tell him to put their trash in front of my house for pickup because I looked like a dirty slob anyway. This kid was probably about 16 or 17 and one day he came home with a brand new car. I am not trying to tell parents that when your kid first gets a license to not get them a car, I am on the side of there is no reason this teenager that just learned to drive needs a luxury car. It was just so Karen could show off and talk about how amazing her son is and that one day he was going to end up in a much better place than the rest of us. The problem that they seemed to realize pretty quickly was that they now had two cars and only one parking spot. The reason everybody knew this is for two reasons actually. They would fight about who got to park in the spot all the time in front of the neighbors. The other reason was that Karen would go around and talk to the neighbors that lived closest telling them that they were so lucky they had a spot and her son was suffering so much from having to go and find a spot as a new driver. She on more than one occasion started asking people if her son could just take claim of their spot for a little while. Even offering at least me money for the spot that seemed like a slap in the face. She literally offered me $10 to give her son my spot and when I told her no like everybody else, she changed attitude. She would get angry and tell me that I was selfish and her son did good in school and deserved my spot. I was still surprised when one day I went outside and saw that my car was just gone and in its place was the son's car. I had to go to work soon and I had no idea where my car was. I called around for a while until I finally found out that my car has been reported as illegally parked and was impounded to a tow lot. This horrible woman actually lied and got my car towed from my house because I didn't want to take $10 and give her son my spot. I did not have time because I had to get a taxi and go to work before I was going to be late. My boss let me leave a little early so I could sort out the problem. 
I got my car back after bringing proof that I was legally parked and then drove back. His car was still there, I called the towing company telling them that there was a car illegally parked in my spot and I needed it to be impounded. As you can guess, this did not seem to go well for Karen, who was so angry when she came out and saw that my car was in my spot and her son's was nowhere to be seen. She banged on my door and yelled, but I was not going to be stupid enough to open it. A couple hours later, I had police knocking on my door and I was not even thinking about the problems I had with Karen before. It turns out she called and told the police that I had stolen her son's spot and was taking advantage because she was new in the neighborhood. Once again, I just showed the police that I owned that spot and she was the one parking there illegally. They ended up only giving the son a warning because he was a new driver and letting them go. But it did not end there, Karen kept showing up at my door and telling me that I had to pay to get her son's car back since the whole thing was my fault. It turned out that not only did they have the normal towing and impounding fees, but the car was part of an accident and that ticket had to be paid. It also turned out the son was showing off his new fancy car and got a speeding ticket, I was not going to pay her a penny and tried my best to ignore her. Finally, I figured the best medicine is revenge and that I had to show Karen, who was boss, if I was going to get left alone. I noticed that she had people coming into her backyard only for a few moments before leaving and driving away. I took a closer look and saw that Karen was actually a drug dealer and that was how she was getting all of her money. I not only reported her to the police but also to the guy that actually owned the property and rented it out to him. I did not want him to get in any kind of trouble for it because he was a really nice guy. Once the police showed up and saw it was another problem with Karen, they were not going to just walk away again. She was caught with drugs in her home all packaged nicely for the customers. There were even drugs found in the son's room because he was probably helping his mom or maybe taking some drugs himself. She was arrested for both drug possession, intent to sell and endangering a minor. Since the son was under 18, she was going to get in even bigger trouble because of that. The owner also sent a letter of eviction because the contract he gave them apparently had some clause of if the renter is using the space for illegal activities, then the contract is broken. Karen ended up getting arrested for the drug possession and also not having any place to live. I backed up the actual owner saying that he had not been around or involved in anything the woman had been doing. He gave them permission to do a full search and get any other evidence out of his property. That was the last I saw of Karen and a few days later another woman that looked a little bit like her was loading up a van with their stuff and driving away with the sun. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.